What is going on, IF Warriors? It's your boy, Edward V, and today we're gonna do something special. I've been making it a tradition to talk about when intermittent fasting starts the fat burning process, but in this video, I'm gonna explain things that you can do to improve the speed in the fat burning process. Things that you can do to get you into that fat burning state much faster. Stay tuned. Last year, January, I talked about when does intermittent fasting start the fat burning process, and then subsequently I made a video based on studies showing the actual metabolic switch. Dr. Steven Anton has been doing heavy, heavy research, so I would definitely use his research as a more validated indication of the time frame. And his time frame that he mentioned is eight to 12 hours. However, it's still give or take a few hours, so I was kind of right on the money based off of the research that comes from getting into a post-absorptive range. He says that from the eight to 12 hours, that's when the body starts to switch and start to activate slightly some ketone bodies because it's going into that fat burning stage. You actually could go into the fat burning stage before you go into the ketosis stage. You might not be in ketosis, but you are burning body fat once you hit that eight hour to 12 hour range based on Dr. Steven Anton's research. And he's actually more likely basing this off of the post absorptive range. So the range will still be the same, which is eight to 12 hours until your body gets into that position where they're starting to burn body fat predominantly for the caloric needs. Now keep in mind that there have been studies where people did intermittent fasting and if the caloric intake was maintenance level, the person did not lose weight. So the caloric deficit still has to be there. Although the body will metabolize body fat using intermittent fasting, it will replace that body fat with more body fat if you're not at a caloric deficit. But there are more emerging research that are coming out that are showing that fasting during the nighttime is actually more beneficial than fasting during the day. Now, fasting in and of itself, regardless of the time of day, is still beneficial, but we can only go based on the studies that are being provided to us. And a lot of studies that are focusing on time-restricted feeding are being given the green light to do zero caloric intake versus caloric intake. Now, the number one thing you want to look at is how controlled these studies are and in this study for example they actually did isocaloric control so they controlled exactly what the person was eating they monitored everything that they were eating and they made sure to keep it at a maintenance level and to have both groups eat the exact same thing so calories and protein were equated for and usually those are the two things that people are looking for to be equal so that the study can have any significance because protein has the potential to increase energy expenditure. And of course, if the calories aren't the same or controlled for, we don't know if the person lost weight simply because they were not consuming the correct amount of calories or because of the intermittent fasting protocol. So these controlled studies where the calories are the same except they're spread out versus the calories being the same in a shorter window are becoming much more important in science in terms of the intermittent fasting protocol. So if you look at this study, although the calories were the same, everything was the same, yes, they didn't lose weight, both groups didn't lose weight, but the group that did the fasting with the time-restricted eating had greater insulin sensitivity, there was a greater beta cell increase, there was a reduction in oxidative stress, there was blood pressure reduction, and even appetite went down. Now, all of these things actually will work in conjunction to you losing weight. Why? Because although they didn't lose weight because they were not in a caloric deficit, if they were in a caloric deficit, they would be much more efficient at burning the body fat over the three meals a day group. And this is because this system has prime their body to burn body fat quicker. Reducing oxidative stress lowers cortisol levels. Cortisol can affect your body and make it harder for you to burn more fat. If you can set your body up to reduce cortisol, things like reducing oxidative stress, you'll then set your body up for success to burn more fat. And this is why intermittent fasting, unlike just doing a specific diet, can carry more benefits to focusing your body on burning body fat as opposed to anything else, like muscle tissue, for example. Because there are a multitude of hormonal elements that are going on in your body that's activating that body fat burning. Obviously, as shown in this study, you still have to to be at a caloric deficit to reap those rewards, but it's becoming more and more clear that intermittent fasting is leaving you in a great position to do this. Now we know that the range is from eight to 12 hours. That's when the metabolic switchover happens. But these 
time restricted feeding studies are showing that if you eat earlier in the day because blood glucose is actually controlled better in your body during the day than it is at night because of the circadian rhythm from around seven to about three o'clock and then not eating any more after that can give you an additional benefit to reaching that body fat burning process earlier than later in the previous video i spoke about glucose intake and all of that stuff being controlled that's one element that you can do reducing carb intake so that your insulin can reduce to baseline much faster but these emerging studies that keep coming out about time restricted feeding are showing that eating earlier can actually add to the element of increasing the speed of when you actually do that switch over remember it's very difficult to pinpoint everyone's switch over which is why there is a range but what we do understand is that this metabolic switch over is happening based on what's going on in your body hormonally trying to give your body every possible advantage to get into that metabolic switch over at the eight hour mark rather than the 12 hour mark is going to net you positive results in a faster time frame so what makes this study very special and something that we have to further look into is that it is showing that intermittent fasting in and of itself can provide these hormonal benefits regardless of weight loss that's what makes this study very important because an argument that a lot of people make is that intermittent fasting isn't really giving you any benefits at all it's simply making it easier for you to eat and that the only reason that you're seeing benefits is because of the fact that you're losing weight but not because of intermittent fasting but this study had everyone eating at a caloric maintenance level no one lost weight not the controlled group not the intermittent fasting group however the intermittent fasting group were the ones that had beta cell increase the increase in insulin sensitivity the reduced oxidative stress the reduction in blood pressure so yes i know that previously i've said that it doesn't really matter when you're doing the intermittent fasting protocol, but it might actually matter. These studies are showing that early time restricted eating can produce an additional benefit. There's another study that is slated to complete in May of 2019, another controlled study, and they're actually gonna focus on the fat loss. So they're gonna put them in a caloric restriction. So that is definitely a study that we should be looking out for. So yes, we do understand when that metabolic switchover happens, but what we're still learning and what we're trying to always improve on is to get closer closer to the eight hour and further from the 12 hour. The closer we can get to that eight hour mark, the more efficient we will be at burning body fat. So I'm gonna link the study below so you can take a look at it for yourself. And of course, I wanna thank my patrons from my Patreon. And I'm gonna put their names right up here. And of course, as always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace!